The, uh, <clears throat> the title of this uh, gathering is وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ uh, which is a verse in the Quran, as we know, which is connected to the first verse of the surah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكْ Alam is a rhetorical question. So the meaning of the verse is, have we not raised high your remembrance? So this is uh, the theme of my lecture tonight, inshallah ta'ala, is to investigate and to analyze what exactly does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually say in the Quran about the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. There's some people who read the Quran and they conclude erroneously that the Quran says that all religions are valid and true. That you don't really have to believe in the risala or the nabuwa of the Prophet wasallam. There's some people who read the Quran and they erroneously conclude that the maqam of other prophets like Isa salam, is higher than the maqam of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Why? Because they say the name of Isa salam occurs more times in the Quran. There's some people who read the Quran and they errone erroneously conclude that the Prophet wasallam, is simply a delivery man. He brought the risala, that's all he brought. And then he leaves, you have no contact with him, you don't hear about him, you have nothing to do with him after that. There are some people who believe when they read the Qur'an that the Qur'an is only for the Arabs and that it's not transcendental, it's not transhistorical. And there are some people who read the Qur'an and they erroneously conclude that the relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu is strictly business. It's a business type of tijara, where he's the manager and there's an employee and there's no intimacy between them. So in order to analyze the Quran, we have to know something about Arabic first. And it's interesting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least 11 times in the Quran, he'll qualify the word Quran with the adjective Arabian. Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabian. La'allakum ta'qilun. We have sent down this Arabic Quran so that you might become people of intellect. The Quran is in Arabic. It's not in Urdu or in Farsi or in English or in Chinese or in Swahili. Now, obviously, most Muslims don't understand Arabic, so they rely on translation. And we have to do that, and you'll, drive, you'll derive the essence of the muhkamat of the Quran in order to perform our fara'id based on translation. But the Quran is in Arabic, so this has to be made clear. And the difference between reading the Quran in Arabic and relying on a translation is like listening to the Super Bowl on the radio and watching it on IMAX in 3D. It makes a world of difference. There's a huge difference. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ do they, do they not have tadabbur of the Qur'an? What is tadabbur? Tadabbur is deep, deep reflection. Right? To penetrate the meanings of the Qur'an. How can we have tadabbur of the Qur'an if we don't study the Arabic language in which the Qur'an was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's an interesting verse in the Qur'an, Surah Baqarah, ayah number 78. I came across this tafsir and I was totally floored by it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا أَمَانِي So Ibn Abbas, Mufassir al-Qur'an, and his student Qatada, radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, they said that this verse is in reference to Bani Israel. That from the Bani Israel are some that are illiterate, they're unlettered. They don't know Al-Kitab, meaning the Torah, except Amani. What is Amani? They said they had Tilawa and they had Hifid, Bila Faham. They recited it and they memorized it, but they didn't understand what they were saying. Right? They didn't understand what they were saying. So Amani is when they imported their own interpretations, their own understandings, their own hawa, their own caprice upon the text. So Arabic preserves the integrity of the religion, the ethos of the religion, the very character of the religion. There's a hadith from Imam Bayhaqi where he says, the Prophet ﷺ says, يَأْتِ عَلَى النَّاسِ زَمَانٌ لَا يَبْقَى مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَىٰ إِسْمَىٰ وَلَا يَبْقَى مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ إِلَىٰ رَسْمَىٰ Nothing will remain from the Qur'an. There will come a time upon the people. Nothing remains from Islam except its name. It's just a name without a meaning. Nothing remains except from the Qur'an except its script. It's just a script that nobody knows the meanings of. Some people will say, well, if the Qur'an is is uh, there's i'jaz, there's a mu'jiza, there's a miraculous aspect to the linguistic aspect of the Qur'an, then how come many Arabs at that time, like Abu Jahl and his ilk, 
Why didn't they believe in the Quran the minute they heard the Quran? And the answer is that the Quran is also, first and foremost, is calling to a moral message. It's calling people towards morality, to be just and be merciful people. And it doesn't matter. If, if someone does not want to be moral, it doesn't matter how eloquently you, you tell them to do that. If they don't want to be moral, they're not going to be moral. So it's interesting. The mushrikeen who rejected the Quran at the time of the Prophet wasallam, they recognized the mu'jizah of the Quran, but they didn't believe in the moral aspect. Many of us are the opposite, right? We're the opposite. We accept the moral aspect of the Quran, but we haven't tasted the Quran. We haven't had an experience of, uh, of the, of the mu'jizah of the Quran from a linguistic uh, standpoint. To Alam Iqbal, he said, if you want to taste the meanings of the Quran, you have to listen to the Quran like the Sahaba listened to the Quran, as if it is the first time that you've heard the Quran. Now we begin with the lecture. A rabbi in Medina came to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he said, Sif li habibak. He said to him, describe your beloved to me. Notice this rabbi, he didn't say Sif li rasulak, Sif li muhammadan, Sif li habibak. The rabbi knew who his Habib was. Do non-Muslims know who we love? Do they know we love the Prophet ﷺ? We love him more than ourselves? We have to ask ourselves. They already knew. Sayyidina Umar said, I can't do that. It's impossible. He said, why? Sifli Habibak. He said, I can't. He said, okay, fine. Sifli Khuluka Habibik. Then just describe his character. Just describe the Khuluk of the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, I can't do that. And the rabbi was frustrated. He said, why can't you do it? So he went to Imam Ali, karamallahu wajha. And he said, sifli khuluka habibik. And Imam, Imam Ali said, I can't do it. It's impossible. He said, why is it impossible? And Imam, Imam Ali said to the rabbi, he said, sifli mata'a dunya. Describe for me the pleasures and enjoyments of the dunya. And the rabbi said, we're going to be here until next week. It's a long answer. And he said, why? Allah says in the Quran, Mata'ur dunya, qaleel. Allah says in the Quran, the enjoyments of the dunya are just a little bit. But he says about our Habib, what does he say? What he, but he says about our Habib, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُكٍ عَظِيمٍ You are dominating vast character. And he said, there's a difference between qaleel and azim. Like the difference between a drop of water and the bahar and the ocean. So this is the first verse we're going to analyze, inshallah ta'ala. And I've been getting over sickness, so my voice is not, it's about 70%. So make dua for me, inshallah ta'ala, that it won't go out. Wa <clears throat> So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, inna, which is harfa tawkeed. This is for emphasis. And then he says, ka. This is kaful khitab, second person masculine singular. He doesn't say wa inna Muhammadan la ala khulukin azim. He says ka, which is more personal, which demonstrates ta'zim and tashrif and takrim that the Prophet ﷺ is being honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he speaks to him in the second person, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So some people will say, some of the du'at, I remember I said this one time. I was in a church because I speak to many Christians all the time. And I said, you know, the name of the Prophet Isa alayhi salam is mentioned five times more in the Quran than the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. And if we say that, we have to be careful because a Christian might have an erroneous idea, right? A false impression that the Prophet Isa alayhi salam is five times more important than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam or is a higher maqam than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. What is the reason why? That the name of the Prophet Isa alayhi salam comes more, his name, Ismul Alam, his proper name, more in the Quran than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. Why? It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hundreds of times in the Quran, speaks directly to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This is a form of ta'zim. This is a form of honoring the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We look at a surah, for example, Al-Inshirah, surah 94. The name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not occur once in this surah. But listen to the surah, Alam Nashrah, Laka Sadraka. Who is Ka Ka? This happens 11 times in the surah. 11 times in this surah, there is a direct reference to the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to him directly in the second person. And it's interesting, the ulama point out the tafdeel of the Prophet sallallahu Have we not expanded for you your sadr? What did Musa alayhi salam say? Rabbi shrah li sadri. Right? He made a dua, a talab to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, expand for me my sadr. But the Prophet ﷺ, his sadr was expand, expanded bila talab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just did it for him. This shows the exalted status of the Prophet ﷺ. When Musa salam was leaving the Fir'aun during the exodus, and Bani Israel were with him, and they got to the shores of the Red Sea, the Bani Israel said, oh, Junud of Fir'aun, the, the army of Fir'aun is coming, they're going to kill us. He said, Kalla, inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. He said, no way. With me is my Lord, he will guide me. With me is my Lord. He mentioned himself and then his Lord. But when the Prophet ﷺ is in the cave with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq had fear, not for himself, but for his companion. إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا Allah is with us. The Prophet ﷺ, there's, there's a secret in the way he speaks that shows his tafdeel over the other anbiya. Whereas Musa ﷺ mentioned himself first and then Allah, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned Allah first and then himself wasallam. Here's something else. Never, not once in the Quran, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call out to the Prophet ﷺ mubashiratan by his first name. This is ajeeb. He never says, Ya Muhammad. He never says, Ya Ahmad. He uses the titles of the Prophet ﷺ. Ya ayyuhal nabiyyu. Ya ayyuhal rasul. Ya ayyuhal mudathir. Ya ayyuhal muzammil. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet ﷺ. Sheikh Abdul Qadir, uh, Sheikh Jafar al-Sadiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who is Imam of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. He says that Ya Seen means Ya Sayyid. Wallahu alam. This is mentioned in Sunni sources. This is mentioned in, in, in Kitab al-Shifa, Qadi Iyad, a Malachite jurist. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Seen, Wal Quran al-Hakim, Inna ka lamin al-Mursaleen. You are a prophet. You are from the Mursaleen. He says, Ya Seen means Ya Sayyid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him Sayyid because he's the Sayyid of Bani Adam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of the ikhwan, they say, don't call the prophet Sayyid. This is bid'ah. This is haram. This is an innovation. Don't call him Sayyid. The Prophet ﷺ himself says, Inna ibni hadha Sayyidun. About who? Imam Hassan. He calls his grandson Sayyid. We can't call him Sayyid. The khutaba, some of these people stand on the minbar and they say, Muhammad, 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 like they're talking about their cousin or something. Who is Muhammad, ya akhi? Are you talking about Rasulullah? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't call him like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't call him like that. أنا سيد ولد آدم ولا فخر. I am master of the children of Adam and I do not boast. This is hadith. محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجمي. Imam Busiri says in the burda, if this burda is bid'a, if it's kufr, the Prophet ﷺ, he came to the, the dream of Imam Busiri and put his cloak around him. The Prophet came to his dream and what does he say in the hadith? That is mutawatir man ra'ani fil manami faqad ra'ani fa inna shaytana la yatamathalu bi. Hadith mutawatir. Denial of the hadith is kufr. Denial of the hadith is kufr. So the Prophet wasallam he was pleased with these words. Interestingly enough as well, the five times in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the name of the Prophet wasallam in the Quran, the five times he mentions it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always connect the name to his title, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You notice it. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Muhammad does not accept a rasul. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ مُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَلَذِنَ مَعْهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ the Prophet ﷺ is the messenger of God, connected, connecting the name to his vocation, to his title. What has come down upon the Prophet ﷺ. The mustard is tanzil. Again, 
a connection to the Prophet's vocation as a Prophet. And finally, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقَ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَةِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولِ يَأْدِي مِنْ بَعْدِ إِسْمُهُ أَحْمَد And to give you glad tidings of a Rasul to come after me whose name is Ahmad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم What about those who say don't make distinctions between the Prophets The Quran says لا نفرق بين أحد من رسولي This is true This is what the Quran says لا نفرق The first person common plural That's something that we say we don't make distinctions. I cannot give a distinction to the Prophet ﷺ that was not given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's true. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given distinctions to Prophets. تِلْكَ الرُّسُلُ فَضَّنَا بَعْدُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضُ مِنْ هُمَّنْ كَلَّمَ اللَّهُ وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْدُهُمْ دَرَجَاتِ That some Prophets, we, we gave more to them than others. We blessed more than others. To one of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke. And others, he raised to various Darajat, various darajat. Imam Izzuddin Ibn Abdul Salam, rahimahullah ta'ala, wrote a beautiful book called Bidayat al-Sul fi Tafdir al-Rasul, the beginning of the inquiry into the high station of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was a companion of the great Shaykh Abu al-Hasan al-Shadili, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who had such a relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, لَوْ غَابَ عَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam تَرْفَةَ عَيْنًا مَا عَدَدْتُ نَفْسِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He said that, he said that if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was veiled from me, the twinkling of an eye, I would not even consider myself a Muslim. What kind of love of the Prophet ﷺ is that? Anyway, Imam Izzuddin, he mentions 42 points of tafdeel, of how the Prophet ﷺ has tafdeel over the rest of Al-Anbiya. Something he mentions, he says, look at the mu'jizat of the Prophet ﷺ. The mu'jizat of the Prophet ﷺ are adhar and akbar. They're more apparent and they're greater when you compare them to the miracles of the previous prophets. For example, he says, Isa alayhi salam, he raised the dead bi-idhnillah. Wa'uhi al-mawta bi-idhnillah. And interestingly enough, there's actually hadith. Now there's weakness in some of these hadith. But there's actually hadith in the Dala'il of Imam Bayhaqi, which also recorded in Kitab al-Shifa of Qadi Iyad, that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said, Ya Rasulullah, my daughter has died in a certain wadi. Can you do something for me? So the Prophet goes there and he, and he says, Ya Fulana, Ihi bi idhnillah. Oh, so and so, live by the permission of Allah. It's mentioned in the hadith. Yeah, there's weakness in it, but it's mentioned. And then she comes out and he says, to, and she says, La bayk ya Rasulullah, at your service. And then he says, Do you want to be with your father or were you happy with your Lord? And she says, I was happy with my Lord. He says, Go back to your Lord. Isa alayhi salam could raise the dead bi idhnillah, but he mentions the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he raised nations back from the dead. Nations were raised by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. Read, read your Christian history. This was called the dark ages of humanity. Europe was sunk in the dark ages. Fi dhulumat. That's what it means. They were in dhulumat. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam took them from dhulumat ila nur into the light sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa salam. 23 years. He transformed a society that's never been done in human history. It's unparalleled. There's no precedent. It wasn't a political revolution or just an economic revolution or a social revolution. All of these, the way we do politics, economics, the way we deal with society, the way we eat, the way we sleep, the way we use the restroom, what we say when we walk into the house, when we walk out of the house, complete change. The way we think, the way we think was changed by the message of the Prophet ﷺ. This is unparalleled in history. I challenge anyone to find anything like this. In 23 years, he transformed the society and transformed the world ﷺ. And of course, we have stories of uh, the awliya, the saints and their charismatic exploits. Imam Abu Jafar al-Tahawi, he says in his aqidah, he says, We believe in the miracles of saints. Saints can perform miracles, right? The awliya, this mentioned in our aqidah, our creedal, uh, creedal articulations, which have the strongest uh, dala'il. Imam Ibrahim al-Laqani, he says, whoever 
uh, whoever disregards the, or whoever rejects the miracles of the awliya, reject them. There's a story, well-known story, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was accosted one time by a Christian. He was accosted. Who, 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 do, you, who do you believe about Isa alayhi salam? He said, he's Rasulullah. He said, no, he's Allah. Astaghfirullah. So he tries to convert. Who is he trying to convert? al ghawth al-A'zam. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> so why don't you believe Isa alayhi salam is God? He said, Astaghfirullah. Why do you believe he's God? He says, because he could raise the dead. He said, oh, interesting. Come take a walk with me. So they go on a stroll and they pass by a graveyard. And Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, he says, watch this, undur. And he points to one of the sepulchers. Ya fulan, qum bi This man comes out of the grave. He said, look what I can do. But you missed the secret. He said, what was the secret? Bi idhnillah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. There's no strength, nor power intrinsically with anything except by permission or by means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this man made tawbah. The miracles of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ghazali actually mentions uh, there's, there were four people that Isa alayhi salam raised from the dead. Bi'ithnillah. A young boy, a young girl, uh, the son of Nuh. It's a very interesting story. We don't have time to go into it. His name was Sam or Shem, which is where we get the, uh, the, the word Semitic languages. But then another man named Lazarus was raised, according to Imam Ghazali. And this story of Lazarus is actually mentioned in the Gospel of John chapter 11, which is a Christian source. The Gospel according to John. And this is very interesting because this is what it says in the Christian source, in the original Greek it says, Hade Iesus Eirentus Aphthalmus Anu. It says, Jesus was standing in front of the grave and he turned his vision towards the Sama, towards the heavens. As Sama'u Qibla to Dua, the ulama say, the heavens is a Qibla for Dua. Just like the Kaaba is a, is a Qibla for our Salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no more in the Sama than he is in the Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transcends space, time, direction, and materiality. It's only a Qibla. Allah who can, Qabla makan. Allah who mawjudun bila makan. Allah doesn't need makan or space. This is a Qibla, right? Isa alayhi salam, he turns his eyes towards the heavens. Kai a pen. And then he said, according to the Greek, Pater, which means father, and he doesn't mean this in the literal sense. This was corrupted by Trinitarian Christians who said that Isa alayhi salam is the literal son of God. But when he teaches his people how to pray, if you're familiar with the gospel tradition, with the so-called Injil, the Anajil al-Arba'a, what does he say in his language, which is called al-Lughat al-Suryaniya, Syriac? He says, Avun the Vashmayo, Nithqatashmuch, our father who art in heaven, all of you, is not just the father of Isa alayhi salam. This approximates the word Rabb. Rabb means father in the New Testament. But what the Christian did at these various church councils is they made it literal. So that's not what he means here. Anyway, he says, Eukaristo soy hati, eikusa soy mu. He says, I thank you that you've heard me. I thank you that he's, he's speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, I thank you that you've heard me. Heard what? His dua. Isa alayhi salam has no intrinsic power to do anything except by the idhan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is stated in the Gospel of John. And then he says, Lazare duru exo, Lazarus come out by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, once on one occasion, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he looked towards the sama also. On one occasion, he looked towards the sama. And he had a shaykh in his heart. He didn't even say anything. Because Allah can read the heart. He had a desire in his heart. And he looked to the heavens with a longing. Tashwiq means longing, an anticipation, a wish. He had a wish. What was his wish? His wish was that the Qibla be changed back to Kaaba. Right? This was his wish. Back to the original Qibla. Inna awwala baytin wudi alin nas bi bakata mubaraka. The first house ever dedicated for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was in Mecca, was Mecca. Changed to Jerusalem, Baytul Maqdis, Temple Mount, temporarily, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with this look towards the heavens and the shawq in his heart. 
He had the shawq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qad nara taqalluba wajhika fi sama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to him directly. And he says, we see you turning your face towards the heavens. فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ This is amazing fi'il. Lama tawkeed, nuna tawkeed. The, the harful mudari'a, the, the, the prefix of the present tense is a noon, which means it's plural. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in the plural when he's one, wahid and ahad. Why? This is nunu ta'zim, jam'un maliki. This is a way of showing the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That indeed, indeed, we will turn who? Ka, you. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the nunu ta'zim, the person he is addressing is also ta'zim. This is according to balagha, according to a rhetoric. We will indeed turn you, qiblatan tarda, towards a qibla that will please you. Sallallahu alayhi alayhi wa sallam. Isa alayhi salam, he can heal the blind. This is mentioned in the Quran, bi idhnillah. It's mentioned in the New Testament. Sa'ad, uh, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, relates at Ghazwat Uhud, a companion name, named Qatada, his eye had not only been blinded, but had come out of its socket and was resting on his cheek and was connected with the vein, right? The Prophet Sallallahu his miracle is adhar. It's more, it's more apparent. Not only did he restore the sight to Qatada's eye, but he restored the eye itself. And Qatada said, I can always tell which eye was replaced by the Prophet Sallallahu because it had the stronger vision than the eye that had been unafflicted. Al-Uqayli mentions as well that his father was an old man and uh, this whiteness glazed over his eyes. The Prophet ﷺ took some of his blessed saliva, some of his blessed saliva, and rubbed over his eyes. Uqayli said, I saw my father in his 80s threading a needle. I saw my father in his 80s threading a needle. This is the Mu'jiza of the Prophet ﷺ. Musa alayhi salam, he struck the rock and waters gushed forth, right? But sometimes waters gush from rocks if there's a river underneath. The miracle of the Prophet ﷺ is adhar wa akbar. Bukhari and Muslim relate, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that there was a shortage of water. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, bring me a vessel. They brought him a vessel. He put his hand into the vessel. He withdrew his hand and it's full of water. Water came from his fingertips. Sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. Adhar wa akbar. The fuqaha mention, when you study fiqh, the first chapter is usually Babu tahara Aqsamul miyah, the types of water. And some of the fuqaha, they mention a line of poetry. Afdalul miyai. Ma'un qad naba' bayna asabi' al-nabi al-muttaba'. The greatest type of water. What is the greatest type of water? You think, oh, Zamzam, the Nile River. No, no, no. Sel Sabil, Tasneem, La. The greatest water in the universe is the water that gushed between the fingers of the obeyed Prophet. Musa salam split the rock. The Prophet shak al qamar, split the moon. Wa inna ka la ala khulukin azim. Inna in la. Innaka la ala. What is this la? Also for emphasis. It's emphasized twice. This is something you don't get in translation. And then ala. Ala. Tharfu makan. A preposition that is used in Arabic grammar before something that is concrete or tangible. For example, I say, uh, Yadi uh, ala tawila. My hand is on the table because the table is something concrete. It's something tangible. But you can use ala before something that is intangible, something that is abstract according to rules of balagha. And then what does that mean? That means tamakkun, mastery over something. You master something. Like if you ask me to do a task and you ask me, are you doing that? And I say, I'm on top of it. What does that mean? I'm on top of it. That means I'm mastering the situation. I'm dominating the situation. Tamakkun. What is the Prophet ﷺ dominating? He dominates character. He masters character. This is a, this is a translation. This is, what, this is the best translation. 
That he masters character. And this word khuluk is also nakira. It's indefinite. There's a tanween. Quite often in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use adjectives and nouns with regards to the Prophet sallallahu that are nakira. They're indefinite. What does that mean? Ibn Malik says, it means unlimited, undefinable, indescribable, unfathomable, extraordinary. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadhira wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi'idhni wa sirajan munira. All of these are nakira. They're indefinite. This is something extraordinary in the Quran. Verily, verily, you dominate unlimited, extraordinary, indescribable character. But that's not it. Azim. This is intensive. Sigatul Mubalagha. Intensive, vast, vast, unlimited, great character. How can we translate this? Verily, you have great character. There's a translation. Does it do justice? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, this is written behind me, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Extraordinary statement. Begins with the wow and then the ma. The ma is nafia. It's negating. Right? You have ma and then later on down the line, you have illa. Harful istithna. So you have ithbat ba'd nafi You have an affirmation after a negation, which is strong tokid. Strong emphasis in Arabic, right? La ilaha illa Allah. And some translations say, there is no deity worthy of worship. No, that's not a good, no God, but Allah. This is the meaning. No God, but Allah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً Right? Strong tawkeed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَرْسَلْنَا Again, he doesn't, say, he doesn't say وَمَا أَرْسَلَ Allah in the third person. Again, he uses the noon of ta'adheem. جَمْعٌ maliki. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks from a position of majesty. So the object that he's addressing also has ta'adheem and takreem and tashrif. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا ta. Allah could have said وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا Muhammadan in the third person. But this is more personal. This is very personal. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا كَا إِلَّا رَحْمَةً The ka denotes قُرْبْ مَعِيَّ Closeness of the Prophet ﷺ to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then رَحْمَةً نَكِرَ This is indefinite noun. Unlimited. Indescribable. Unfathomable mercy. Mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not use a fi'il. He doesn't say, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا أَنْ تَرْحَمْ الْعَالَمِينَ or something like that. He doesn't say, we did not send you except to show mercy. What does he say? You are mercy. ذَاتُهُ رَحْمَةً His very essence is mercy. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم By way of comparison again, New Testament with the Quran. I have a master's degree in the New Testament. I can read and write Greek and Hebrew. It's really interesting. People have these shows on satellite television comparing prophets in a terrible way, in a way that's illogical. Now, we don't mean to compare. We know Isa alayhi salam is a great prophet and he's rahmatan. No doubt about it. But this is according to a Christian source. A Christian source, Matthew 10, it says that when Isa alayhi salam sent the Hawariyun on khuruj fi sabilillah for da'wah to the Injil, he says to them, go into these cities and preach the gospel, the Injil. And if that city rejects you, shake the dust of that city off of your feet. What does that mean? That means that city is going to hell. And then he says, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, Qawm al Lut, is going to have a better time on the day of judgment than those cities. This is what Isa alayhi salam tells his Hawariyun according to the gospel, according to Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. Okay? Look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He doesn't send Sahaba to Ta'if. He goes himself. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He goes to Ta'if. What happens to him? Do they put dust on him? What happens? They abuse him. They kick and punch him. They insult him. They stone him. His feet are covered in his 
own blood, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he goes in that orchard beneath the tree and the angel descends. Ya Rasulullah, give us the word and this city, the Bani Thaqif and the Ta'if people of the Hawazin, they're gone. They're going to be dust. We'll turn them into dust. What is the response of the Prophet Sallallahu yeah, Does he say, yes, the, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will fare better than Bani Thaqif? The ta no. Bal arju an, an yakhruja min aslabihim man ya'bud Allah wahda wa la yushriku bihi shay'a aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. Subhanallah. You know, the other day, this brother brought his daughter, little daughter to me. and said, make dua for my daughter. So I held the daughter and I made dua. Right? But what about the person who makes dua for the children of this little girl that he hasn't even seen yet? That's greater mercy. Right? Make dua for the children of your children of your children that you haven't even seen. But imagine making dua for the children of the children of the children of your enemies, of those who have stoned you out of the city and have mocked you and ridiculed you. This is rahmatan. This is unlimited. This is indefinable. This is unfathomable. Impossible to grasp mercy. He says, no, I have hope in their descendants. That they will come and they'll worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Bani Thaqif a few years later, all of them became Muslim. You go to Ta'if today, you have Muslimin. Why? Dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Because he is Rahmatan. He is Rahmatan. The Gospel of Luke in the New Testament it says that when they were crucifying Isa alayhi salam, and of course, he wasn't crucified. This is a different debate. But anyway, they say that when he's being crucified, he says in the Greek language, pater afes autois, which means, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. And what's interesting here is that the vast majority of Christian scholars do not believe that Isa alayhi salam actually made that statement. It's a long story. It goes into textual analysis of the New Testament, so on and so forth, take my word for it. The vast majority don't believe he made that statement. So he's in, in other words, Isa alayhi salam is in a position of being killed or tortured and he says, forgive them. And it's not even authentic. Now look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ghazwat Uhud, where his companions are being killed left and right. His beloved uncle Hamza is killed. His body is mutilated after the battle, cannibalized after the battle. Many Sahaba, they're being killed by the mushrikeen. The Prophet wasallam, he sustains injuries to his blessed face. He chips his tooth, he ruptures his lower lip, and he's got a big gash on his forehead, and blood is pouring down his face, wasallam. And he's trying to catch his blood in his hands. He's trying to catch his blood in his hands. And the Sahaba said, why are you doing this? And he said, if one drop of this blood should strike the earth, one drop should strike the earth immediately. These mushrikeen are done for. Immediately they're done. And the Sahaba said, that sounds good. Let the blood flow. Let it flow and let these mushrikeen be gone. A short time later, they saw him with his hands raised. And they said, aha, now these mushrikeen are done for. He's making dua against them. Allahumma hadi qawmi. Innahum la ya'lamun. This is what he said. Sallallahu alayhi wa Oh Allah, guide my people. For they don't know. Guide my people. You look at the zu'ama of the Quraysh on that day. Look at their leaders. Amr ibn al-As became Muslim. Abu Sufyan ibn Harb became Muslim. Ikrama ibn Abi Jahal became Muslim. These people became Muslim on that day. Why? Because Hind bint Utba, the woman who cannibalized Hamza, Wahshi, the man who killed him, both of these people became Muslim and they made good their Islam. It was a genuine conversion. Radiallahu anhum jami'an. Why? Dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. There's a story and also Gospel of Luke. But again, by way of comparison. Chapter 19, verse 27. <clears throat> Isa alayhi salam, according to the Christian text, he's at a place called Bethany, which is just outside of Is uh, Jerusalem. He's going to go into Jerusalem and seize Masjid al-Aqsa by force, right? He's going to take the Masjid al-Aqsa and declare himself al-Masih publicly on the Temple Mount. So he tells his Hawariyun, he says, those enemies of mine, 
that do not accept me as their king. Bring them hither and slay them before me. Do you understand this translation? It's a King James translation. Another translation says, whoever does not wish for me to be their king, cut their throats in my very presence. Luke 19, 27. This is what he says. In a position of power, khalas, it's over for them. You don't believe you're done. Now let's look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He comes into Fath into Mecca, during Fatha Mecca. And he hears what? He hears Sa'd ibn Ubadah saying what? Today is a day of slaughter. The debasement of the Quraysh. Right? Al-yawma yawmul malhama. Adhallallahu Qurayshan. Today is a day of slaughter. The debasement of the Quraysh. He says, don't say that. Al-yawma yawmul marhama. Today is a day of, of mercy. Today is a day of mercy. The exaltation of the Quraysh. La tathriba alaykum al There's no blemish on you this day. This is rahmatan. This is unlimited, unfathomable, extraordinary mercy. And then he says, lil alameen. Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. What is al alameen? One opinion is kullu ma siwa Allah. Everything except God is al alameen. All of creation is al alameen. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not only sent to jinn and ins, but to everything in creation. He's a mercy for Jannah. How is he a mercy for Jannah? Because he's better than Jannah. He's Jannah to Jannah. He's, the, he's the, the, the paradise for paradise. Because he's better than paradise. He's the reward of paradise. So then what is his reward? What is the reward of the Prophet wasallam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is his reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a universal prophet. There's no doubt about it. وَمَا أَرَسَلْنَكَ إِلَى كَافَةِ لِلنَّاسِ you were sent to the whole of humanity. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا I was sent to say, this is قُلْ فِعْلْ أَمْرِ From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An imperative command. Say, I am the messenger of God sent to all of you. He said, أُرْسِلْتُ إِلَى الْخَلْكِ كَافَ I was sent to all of creation. All of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين منفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة. The the kafir, meaning أهل الكتاب and مشركين, are not going to break away from their kufr until البينة comes to them. البينة. And there's an alif lam here. And there's different reasons why Arabic has alif lam. One reason is that it's it's أهديا, meaning that it's referring to something that was already known. So the, the Ahlul Kitab, they already were talking about someone that they called Al-Bayyina, who's going to come to them, right? They knew the Prophet, يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They knew the Prophet like they knew one of their own sons, right? And, uh, and if there's time for Q&A, I can give you the name of the Prophet Wasallam in the Bible. I show you the name of the Prophet the very name of the Prophet Wasallam is in the Bible. Every Bible to this day in the original Hebrew. But what does the next verse say? Rasulun min Allah. Rasulun min Allah. Again, this is nakira. This is indefinite. Meaning such a great messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We miss these subtleties in the translation. Isa alayhi salam, according to the gospel of John, he prophesizes someone called Parakletas. Parakletas. This is in Greek. He probably didn't speak Greek, but this is the best the Christians have done with their book. They have Parakletas. He says someone's going to come who's going to teach you all truth and he calls him Ha Parakletas. What does this word mean? Parakletas. Para is a preposition which means to be next to somebody. Para, you're next to somebody. You're beside him. And Kletas is from the verb Kaleo which means to call. Kaleo, call. So this is someone that you call to be next to you. When? When you need an intercessor on the day of judgment, you call on somebody. Who do you call on? You call on somebody to be next to you. This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who is Al... He is a shafi' wal mushaffa'. He is the intercessor and he's also the one whose intercession is accepted. There's many more verses we can talk about. I'm running out of time. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ 
uswatun hasana. Subhanallah. What is laqad? Lama tawkid, harfu tahqiq. What do these mean? Laqad, laqad kana lakum. Why laqad? If somebody asked you tomorrow, was Dr. Mirza at the Mawlid? You say, naam ja'a, he came. And that person says to you, I don't believe you. You say, qad ja'a, qad ja'a. Yes, he came. He says, you know, I still don't believe you. Laqad ja'a, okay, take it easy. I believe you. Strong, strong emphasis. Laqad kana lakum fi Rasulillah. Why fi? Why not just Rasulullah? In the Messenger of God, that means the, the Prophet ﷺ is immersed in uswatun hasana. He's immersed, istighraq. There's immersion in uswatun hasana, in beautiful character. And this is also nakira, undefined, unlimited. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. A few more things and we're done, inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is ajib. I read this verse, I read this verse thousand times, I didn't notice this until I saw a tafsir of Imam Al-Qurtubi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In Surah At-Tawbah, ayah number 62, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu wa rasuluhu ahaqqu an yurduhu. Right? Did you guys catch it? Allah and His Messenger, it is more pleasing, that it is more befitting that you please Him. How many entities are mentioned? There's two entities mentioned. Allah and the Rasul. So why not? Ahaqu an yurdu huma. Huma. Muthanna. It's dual. Two entities mentioned. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use a damir that is mufradul ghaib. Third person, masculine, singular. Wallahu wa rasuluhu. Two entities. They are not the same. Laysa ka mithlihi shay'un. Ahaqu an yurdu hu. Him. Instead of them, what does this indicate? This indicates, according to Imam Al-Qurtubi, an intimate relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not strictly business. He's not an employee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This isn't just tijara. There's uns, there's intimacy, there's qurb, there's nearness, there's mahabba, there's love. He's called Habib Allah. This is his title. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This denotes fana. He's annihilated fi akhlaqillah, fi hubbillah. He's annihilated in the character of Allah, in the love of Allah. Takhallaku bi akhlaqillah. He said, adorn yourselves with the character of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the meaning of the hadith Qudsi according to Abu Qasim al Junaid. My servant does not draw close to me with anything more beloved by me than his fara'id. And then my servant continues to draw close to me with his nawafil until I love him. Until I love him. Then I become the eye by which he sees and the hand by which he strikes and the foot by which he walks. If he were to ask anything from me, I will give it to him. We cannot take this this hadith in the literal sense, Allah does not become your eye, Allah does not become your hand, He does not become your foot. What does it mean? This means that the servant is totally guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The servant's heart is polished by the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he becomes a reflector of his light just as the moon reflects the light of the sun. This is indicated in the Quran many times. It was not you who threw when you threw, Allah threw. What does it mean? Allah threw something physically? Hashalillah. That means the Prophet's actions are completely guided. There's people who want to separate Allah from His Messenger. They say, for, forget about hadith, forget about sunnah. What did the Shaykh recite? Ya ayyuhal, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tuqaddimu, la tuqaddimu, bayna yadi illahi wa rasulihi, wa taqullah. Oh you who believe, do not divorce Allah from His Messenger. Do not put yourselves between Allah and His Messenger. Do not separate Allah from His Messenger. Fear God, wa taqullah. Ma yuti'ir rasula, faqad ata Allah. Whoever obeys the Messenger, Obeys Allah. Halas. If you obey the messenger, you're, obey you're obeying Allah. Why? Because they're the same person, essentially? No. 
Astaghfirullah, laysa kimithlihi shay'un. It's because they have the same obedience. Man ata'ani faqad ata'allah, wa man asani faqad asallah. Hadith sahih. Whoever obeys me, obeys Allah. Whoever disobeys me, disobeys Allah. Fatimatun bid'atun minni. Faman aghdabaha faqad aghdabani. Wa man aghdabani faqad aghdab Allah. Fatima is a piece of my flesh. Alayhi salam. Alayhi salam. Whoever makes her angry has made me angry. Whoever makes me angry has made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry. The obedience of Allah and the obedience of the messenger is the same. It is impossible to obey Allah and disobey the Prophet sallallahu It is impossible to obey Allah and at the same time disobey the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This does not make him more than a human being. He's bashar yuha ilayya. He's a yuha ilayhi. He is a bashar who receives revelation. This is the subtlety that Hellenistic Christianity totally misunderstood. This is referred to as Imam Ghazali's mirror Christology. Imam Ghazali talks about this. Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, hujjatul Islam. Hujjatul Islam. He is mujaddid of his qarn. He calls this mirror Christology. That when the divine light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reflected and shone from the pure heart of Isa alayhi salam, those who did not follow Sharia, Christianity by and large is antinomian, they don't follow the Sharia. When this light reflected from his heart, those who did not understand or have the Sharia did not know how to discern this light. So they mistook the reflection for the source. They mistook the reflection for the source. It's like seeing a reflection of the moon in a lake when the water is still and jumping into the lake, hoping to catch the moon. But what happens to that person? He finds himself drowning in error, in kufr, right? How much different is the actual moon, this huge celestial body in the sky, in the space? How much more different is that than its reflection in a small pond on earth? How much more is the distance between Allah and his creation? So for Christians, Lahut and Nasut became mingled. And they began to believe in things like ittihad and hulul and tajassud and tathleeth. You know, this idea of union or incarnation and trinity, these types of things. Right? But Muslims have the sharia. Muslims have the Quran, they have guidance, they have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one in the history of Islam, this is ajib, no one in the history of Islam has ever claimed to be Muslim and openly worshipped the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It has never happened. They've done it to Imam Ali, but not to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one has ever said, I'm Muslim and I worship the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi because we know this goes against the very fabric of our religion. But this does not mean that we negate the intimate relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Habib. And if we don't understand it, then we don't understand it. But we cannot deny it. We cannot deny that the Prophet sallallahu is the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you just indulge me for maybe five more minutes, inshallah ta'ala, then we'll finish. Ibn Qayyim, he says that... <clears throat> When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by something, takes a qasam, that means that this is something truly great. When he takes an oath, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La amruka to the Prophet sallallahu By your life. He takes an oath by the life of the Prophet sallallahu Ibn Abbas said, I don't remember Allah taking an oath by the life of any other human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى By the dawn, by the, uh, by the night when it is still, Imam At-Tabari said, Do you know what duha is? وَجَهُ sharif. You know what layl is? قَلْبَهُ sharif. He said that, Imam At-Tabari, this is yani mainstream tafsir. What did he say? Duha is the face of the Prophet wasallam. Allah takes an oath. وَالضُّحَى وَاوُ الْقَسَمْ what do I, by the face of the Prophet, by the heart of the Prophet. Ma wa da'aka wa ma qala. Why, why this verse? Because there was a fatra in the revelation. And some of the mushrikeen were making fun of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Making istihza. 
of the Prophet ﷺ, mocking him. Allah says, ma wada'aka. Wada'a is called fi'l muta'addi. This is a transitive verb. It means, what that means is, it needs to have an object, a direct object. And there is an object. Ma wada'aka. Ka. Right? This is the direct object. Fi mahalli nusbin maf'ul bihi. But the verb at the end of the ayah, qala, which means to hate, is also fi'l muta'addi. But there's no object. This is, uh, this is really beautiful. Ma wada'aka rabbuku wa ma qala. Some translations say, your Lord has not forsaken you, nor does he hate you. There's no you at the end of qala. He doesn't say, wa ma qalak. It's qala, stop. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never even suggest that he hates the Prophet sallallahu Even when he's negating the statement. He won't even suggest that he's displeased with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi He's not just a delivery man. And soon will thy Lord give you something that will please thee. Imam al Suyuti says in his tafsir, the Prophet said, Lan arda wa wahidun min ummati fin nar, when this ayah was revealed. I will not be pleased while one person from my ummah is in the fire. He's not just a delivery man. We have no relationship with him. He brought the risala. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan. Goodbye. No, we have, an, we have an intimate relationship with the Prophet ﷺ. I'm ending soon, inshallah ta'ala. Just a few, a few, two more minutes, inshallah. Aisha relates a hadith in, the, in, in Tirmidhi, in the Shama'il al-Nabawiyya. Qama Rasulullah ﷺ, ayatan min al-Qur'ani layla. The Prophet ﷺ, he recited one verse of the Qur'an the entire night. One verse of the Qur'an the entire night. What was the verse? In to adhibhum, wa in to adhibhum, fa innahum ibaduk. Wa in taghfir lahum, fa inna ka anta al-aziz wal hakim. If you punish them, they are your servants. If you forgive them, you are great and wise. He recited this verse all night long. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then she said that when he finally went into sajda, he collapsed into the sajda. And then she heard him say, Allahumma ummati. This is just a delivery man. He doesn't care about us. Do you care about him? He stands all night for you until his feet are swollen. His feet are swollen, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma, what is Allahumma? Evocative address. What does it mean? He's calling on all the names and attributes of Allah that he knows and he doesn't know. This is the meaning of Allahumma. Wadittu, wadittu lo anni ra'itu ikhwani. This hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wadittu, this is from mawadda. I would have loved to have seen my brethren. Loved. Who's his brethren? The Sahaba said, aren't we your brethren? Are we not your brethren? He says, no. You are my companions. Who are the brethren? brethren? Those who come after me, who have never seen me, but are willing to, to sell all of their possessions and sacrifice their families just to gaze at me one time. These are my ikhwan. He's talking about us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's not just a delivery man. We have an intimate relationship with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm sorry I went too long. Uh, may Allah forgive um, me if I bored you or offended you. <clears throat> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.